Hello, I'm Dr. Peter Carter, Director of the Climate Emergency Institute, and I have another video today. This video is really quite different. On to my good news. And I've got to say, this really, really surprised me. What I discovered is that uh, 2025 is already a record year for clean energy breakthroughs. It is quite amazing. This is just part of the list that I put together. On geothermal, one of my absolute favorite uh, clean energies, in January of this year, in Houston, Texas, they had a full-scale demonstration of an oil rig, and this I love, using a new drilling technique based on the oil rig technology, capable of reaching super hot geothermal resources two to 12 miles below the Earth's surface. Now, this is the sort of thing I, I read years ago that might be, pop, that might be possible. So really, this is a dream come true because uh, geothermal energy uh, produces, the capacity for geothermal energy is many times more than the world's consumption of energy today. And the uh, press release said that, of course, this advancement represents a significant step towards harnessing previously inaccessible clean geothermal energy as an alternative to fossil fuels. Then April this year, China. China achieves a breakthrough in solar-powered water splitting for hydrogen production. These are all amazing technologies. And they're all happening. They're all, it's not just theory. This is happening. Uh, then we have another sort of dream come true. Um, you know, we rely on uh, photosynthesis, of course, of, the green of green plants for our life and every other life on the planet. So uh, one of the dream of the scientists is, can we reproduce this? They've done it. February this year, scientists have developed what they call nano flowers made of copper attached to a solar cell as a leaf in a design mimicking how plants capture sunlight through photosynthesis. And that research production is at California Berkeley and Cambridge in England. April this year. This development is called plug, plug flow water drops. And here the scientists have mimicked rainfall in order to produce clean energy. And this is a patterned flow that they've developed, Singapore scientists, and they have generated electricity from water droplets with a high efficiency using this method called plug throw, plug flow, where water columns with air pockets create the charge by separating. Beautiful, clean energy from water droplets. In January this year, heat pump development. Um, we all know how heat pumps are great and popular, but now the Chinese scientists, again, have developed a hybrid heat pump providing ultra-high temperature heating of 180 degrees C. A heat pump that can produce 180 degrees C. So these are all, as I say, absolutely amazing, big breakthroughs for clean energy. China again in June, a mini nuclear energy breakthrough. Now, I know sort of most of the environmentalists, and I used to be with them, of course, um, are not very, um, don't really like the idea of nuclear fission energy, but uh, um, Let's put it like this. Um, if we close down all the nuclear energy plants in the world, um, it would be all over. The planet would burn up. So we need all of the sources of clean energy that we can get. We need it now. We need it today. So it's very significant that China has activated the world's first commercial compact reactor to develop clean energy to over half a million homes. Again, on nuclear fission, again China, 
the first thorium-based nuclear energy breakthrough. And the, the interesting thing is, and I'm well aware of this, is they use technology that was developed decades ago by the United States. Um, fusion energy, you know, the sort of holy grail of energy, um, reproducing the energy from the sun. There have been many breakthroughs at different um, uh, fusion energy experiments around the world. Now, of course, yes, we've heard fusion energy is going to come online 10 years and another 10 years, another 10 years. But the fact is that this is a breakthrough and it means that in the future, in the future, if we can ensure our survival and the survival of our civilization, our future will be able to use fusion energy. So, we're looking now at another United Nations Climate Summit called COP30 in Brazil. And this week, I got the information that Brazil is trying to get fossil fuels on the agenda. I noticed when I read the agenda, there was nothing about fossil fuels. Um, I mentioned here, and, and I've described it over and over, that the COP process, um, um, which has been going for over 30 years now, is set up to fail. It cannot work. And the fundamental cause is its voting system, which is a biased, extraordinary voting system which favors the fossil fuel industry. And so what can we do? Well, I had the pleasure recently of uh, being invited to um, two panels on climate change. And the pleasure was that Sebra Berman, um, a famous Canadian environmental activist, was on the panel as well. Now, I was aware that Sebra had set up what they initially called the, uh, went by the interesting name of the um, fossil fuel non-proliferation fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty. And I knew that they had a lot of members and I knew that they had a lot of members doing great work around the world, but I didn't understand really how good it is. Um, uh, this is how we can do it. And this is definitely how we can do it. This has everything. It doesn't miss anything out. It's got subsidies in great detail. It's got everything covered. If you go anywhere else, you won't find everything covered. You'll find some things covered, but you'll find a lot of vital things missing. I was amazed to find that they had put together, they had united civil society, which I thought could never happen on climate change. They have 2,700 civil society organizations in what is now called the Fossil Fuel Treaty Project. And this project is huge. It's got lots of countries, it's got lots of cities signed on, and lots of organizations and institutions signed on. It's a great, great, great thing. And uh, we should give it all the support and publicity that we possibly can, because as I say, this is the only way. This fossil fuel treaty uh, concept, and in great, great successful action, this is the only way that we can do this. On their website, they have 16 nation states signed on to the fossil fuel treaty, over 130 cities, and uh, numerous uh, subnational governments and other institutions that I mentioned. So that's the place to go.